Hey, good evening, folks. Blitzball Champ is back with a brand new video here on the U to the Two. So, just finished watching uh, WrestleMania Backlash pay per view, and <laughs> this, yeah, I'm gonna just jump right on into it because this pay per view was could have been decent. But it ended up, there was one particular match that just ruined a big portion of this pay-per-view, which I'll get into later. Pardon me. So, starting off, the, the kickoff match, the United States champion Sheamus issued an open challenge, and Ricochet actually came down and accepted the open challenge. So we had Ricochet versus Sheamus. Um, of course, you know, it's been a while since re we've really seen Ricochet in action, but I think he's been mainly reduced to WWE main event appearances. But um, Sheamus vers versus Ricochet. Um, Sheamus got the win got the victory. I mean, we got to see some high flying ricochet offense that we usually see, but Sheamus got the victory after just a knee, not a bro kick, but just a knee. Like they couldn't even have him get the victory with a bro kick because ricochet sidestepped it, but ended up eating a knee, just a knee. For his troubles. And that's how Sheamus gets the one, two, three. Just like, dang. Now just any generic move is a finisher. Nowadays. It's just ridiculous. I don't know if that was because uh, it was a botch or what. But. Maybe he, was, he, maybe he wasn't supposed to sidestep the bro kick. But. He just ate a knee, just a random knee afterwards, and Sheamus got the victory. Just really dumb. But that was the pre-show match. Um, the main card kicked off with the Raw Women's Championship Triple Threat match, where Rhea Ripley defended the title against Asuka and Charlotte Flair. Um, shout out to Charlotte for supporting uh, the um, Corilla DeVille 101 Dalmatians uh, ring gear, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this was actually a pretty pretty okay match. Um, all three ladies got a chance to really showcase. Um, got to see some high flying from Charlotte, you know, doing the moonsault from the top of the turnbuckle to the outside on Rhea and Asuka. Um, Asuka got in some, some really good offense as well as Rhea. But Rhea was able to take advantage and hit Asuka with the Riptide for the 1-2-3. Rhea Ripley retains the title, the Raw Women's Championship, which, honestly, regardless of whether it was Rhea or Charlotte, Asuka was going to eat the pen. And once again, Asuka, pen clean, and and has has to job out has to be the one to eat the pen. It's really ridiculous, and that's three times now that Oscar's been pinned by Rhea Ripley. So uh, it's just really ridiculous. But the match itself was all right. The, the match itself was all right. Um, we had the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match where the Dirty Dogs defended against the Mysterios. Now, earlier, the Dirty Dogs took out Dominic Mysterio backstage to the point where he had, like, injured ribs, and Ray told his son, son to stay back, don't come out, I'll handle this. He's, you know, he's got to handle it on his own. So, for pretty much the first half of the match, it was pretty much a two-on-one handicap match. Ray did the best he could, but the the two on one advantage was too much for him. 
Um, but sure enough, Dominic did come down to the ring later in the match. Um, Rey Mysterio was hesitant to tag him in, but Dominic, he wanted in. He wanted in so badly. And he did get a chance to, to get in, got a little bit of offense, but then he got overwhelmed. And then eventually was able to get Rey Mysterio back in. Um, and then there was a time where just the Mysterios had the momentum and had the opportunity to finish things off. Um, there was a 619 to, to Bobby Roode. Um, then Rey tagged in Dominic. Rey Mysterio took out Dolph Ziggler with a sliding sunset flip bomb into the barricade. And then Dominic finished off Bobby Roode with a frog splash for the one, two, three. And the Mysterio family, Ray and Dominic Mysterio, become the new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. For the first time in WWE history, father and son Tag Team Champions. So, um... This was pretty big. Pretty big. Um, Dominic gets his first WWE championship in his WWE career. And to be honest, it really did not take that long to happen. It didn't take that long to happen. So, congratulations to the Mysterio family. And, you know, I'd like to see them have a decent, decent long run. And... Who knows? Maybe they will eventually have a chance to um, defend against the Usos. I mean, they are on SmackDown, so I can only imagine that the Usos are going to eventually challenge them at some point. I mean, I know they got the story angle with Roman Reigns, but I would think at some point the Usos would probably challenge the Mysterios and the Street Profits as well. I mean, you got them, you got... Um, Alpha Academy. So, I mean, it'll be interesting, but I hope they have a decent long tag run. I mean, they just made history as the first father and son tag team champions. So, I'm hoping they'll have a good run. Um, and then things really, really went downhill. So next up was the Lumberjack match between Damian Priest and The Miz. Now, usually Lumberjack match, you have all the rest, the other wrestlers come out, surround the ring, and serve as the Lumberjacks. But no, 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 no. That didn't happen this, ma this match. The Lumberjacks ended up being zombies. Yeah, I, I didn't that I didn't make a mistake in saying that. The lumberjacks were zombies. All this to help promote the new upcoming WWE movie Army of Dead, Army of the Dead, starring um, Batista. The Lumberjacks for this match were all zombies. Whoever okayed this match, whether it was Vince or creative of what or whatever, seriously needs to be fired on the spot ASAP. Zombies were the lumberjacks. <sighs> there was a moment where Damian Priest and Miz were on the outside fighting off the zombies. <laughs> there was a moment where Johnny Drip Jip got eaten and taken behind the barricade 
by by a few zombies. Damian Priest hit got hit the lights on the Miz, got the pin. So Damian Priest defeated the Miz again. Damian got out of the ring, and the swarm of zombie lumberjacks come into the ring and swarm over the Miz and and start eating it at him, eating at his flesh, supposedly eating at his flesh. So I guess it's safe to say we can expect a zombified Miz on Raw uh, tomorrow night. Hmm? Will we ever will we ever see the Miz again? I mean, after all, the zombies were all on him like they were eating him. The mattress trash, the idea of zombie lumberjacks was trash. I don't care what they were trying to promote. And this made the pay-per-view look really, really lackluster. This was such a buzzkill for this pay-per-view. It was so bad that for part of the match, I, I took a bathroom break. And I don't blame anybody else for doing that. Moving on. We had the SmackDown Women's Championship match where Bianca Belair defended the title against Bayley. Her first title defense. And this was actually a pretty pretty dang on good match. It was, it was a pretty good match. Um, of course, there were a few times where Bayley would try to use Bianca's hair against her. But there was a key point where that backfired and Bianca was able to reverse and get a roll up with the leverage of her of her hair to get the one, two, three. Um, it looked like it would, may have been a bit of a botch just in the way that the pen was done. I think it was supposed to look a little bit cleaner, but Bianca Belair did get the, the roll up with the support of her hair to uh, get the one, two, three and retain the SmackDown Women's title. Of course, Bailey pitched a fit afterwards, but but yeah, Bianca Belair gets her first successful title defense. So, um, which, you know, I figured was going to happen. I mean, she wasn't going to just lose the title to Bailey. I mean, she just won it. But um, it was a pretty decent match. It was a pretty decent match. Um, we had the WWE Championship Triple Threat match. Bobby Lashley defending against Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre. Um, you know, there were times throughout this match that Bobby Lashley was trying to get Drew McIntyre to work together with him to take out Braun. And, um, you know, all three men, you know, were doing their thing. You know, everybody got to get in some good offense. We got to see the Strowman Express. We got to see also um, Bobby Lashley thrown through part of the Thunderdome LED board and set Pyro off. Um, so Lashley was incapacitated for most of this match, or at least throughout the second half of the match to the point where it mainly came down to Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre. And um, there was even a point where on the outside, Drew went for a Claymore to Braun, but Braun caught him and ended up powerbombing him through the announce table. So I thought that was a pretty sick spot. But um, ultimately, Lashley came back at the last moment after... Um, Braun got hit with a Claymore. Um, Lashley, which I figured was going to happen. I figured he was eventually going to uh, show back up. But, um, but Lashley was able to come at that the last second, toss out Drew McIntyre, and then for one good measure, Speared Braun Strowman, and Braun Strowman ate the pin. 
Bobby Lashley with the one, two, three, and he retains. Sucks that Braun had to eat the pin, but it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, but yeah, Drew McIntyre pretty much had it in the bag after the Claymore kick, but got thrown out by Lashley at the last moment. A spear for good measure. So, and I also thought it was interesting that um, Drew McIntyre hit Braun Strowman with a Mick Minchinoku driver. That that was really that was a really interesting spot, but kind of cool that he did that. But uh, Bobby Lashley um, retains the WWE Championship. Not surprised at the outcome, but um, yeah. And then the main event was the. Universal Championship match as um, Roman Reigns defended the title against uh, Cesaro. Um, overall, I thought this was a pretty pretty good match. I thought this was a good match. It it told a it told a good story. I was kind of surprised that there was no interference from uh, the Usos during this match, and Roman Reigns actually won clean. Over Cesaro. Got him with the guillotine. I was hoping to at least see one set of Cesaro swings, but it didn't happen. Um, but, yeah. Roman Reigns made uh, Cesaro pass out. There was a lot of effort that Cesaro made to get out of that guillotine, but... Passed out. Roman Reigns got the victory and retains. And then afterwards, Cesaro just got flat out humiliated when Jey Uso came down, put the lay around the neck of Roman Reigns, and then super kicked Cesaro and beat him down some. And then out of nowhere, Seth Rollins' theme hits. And he comes down wearing a jacket and outfit like, like paint accidentally spilled on him. Came down, stared down with Roman Reigns, and then proceeded to attack Cesaro. And then, of course, eventually Roman and Paul Heyman left. And all that was left was just a beat down Seth Rollins was giving Cesaro. Um, worked on his arm that kept being worked on in that match earlier. Even put a chair to his arm and just roughed up Cesaro, roughed up his arm, got him with a curb stomp on the outside, and just, and that's how you end the pay per view with Seth Rollins beating down Cesaro, who just lost clean to Roman Reigns. It's actually pretty derailing. It's pretty derailing. But it just goes to show that it's not over between Cesaro and Seth Rollins. It's not over. Just not over. But honestly, this was a pretty lackluster. It would have been an okay, pretty decent pay-per-view overall if it wasn't for that Lumberjack match with Zombies. That just killed like, the whole momentum of the pay-per-view. Like, that was just flat-out bad. That one match literally just weakened the whole pay-per-view. <sighs> but that's WrestleMania Backlash. And then, of course, the announcement was made. Um, Next pay-per-view, um, Hell in a Cell in June, June 20th. So, yeah, I mean, also got word that Zelina Vega has re-signed with the WWE, so she's going to be coming back. So it'll be interesting how they insert her back into the mix. Um... I believe the last place she was on before she got let go was Raw. So we'll see if she gets brought back to Raw or maybe she 
gets brought back to SmackDown. But we will have to see. But honestly, this pay per view is uh, uh, overall. There were some bright spots, but just the Lumberjack match really, really killed a lot of the momentum. So, we'll just have to see uh, where they go from now as they start with a new season of, of shows leading up to uh, Hell in a Cell. But, anyway... What did y'all think of this pay-per-view, WrestleMania Backlash? What did you think of the card? What did you think of the outcomes? Uh, there was only one title change, which um, the, the Mysterios became new tag, uh, SmackDown Tag Team Champions. That was the only title change. But, I don't know. Just let me know what y'all's thoughts are on this pay-per-view. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Um... And thank you so much for watching. This is Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram signing off for um, this review of WrestleMania Backlash. Hope everybody has a blessed week. I will see y'all soon. Peace and good night.